Welcome to the third part of the Kaleidoscope example series. In this part, I'm going to do the last um, piece of the puzzle, I guess. I'm going to take those little triangles that I made last time for all of the different rotations and reflections and turn them into the Kaleidoscope pattern. And between the videos, I was thinking a bit about how I was going to do this, and I started off with this idea that I would take those triangles and kind of tile them across the page, have a for loop where I go across the canvas and then down the canvas, and depending on where I was, I was going to choose a different triangle each time. And you can see in this drawing the numbers there, like 4, 3, 2, 5, 6, 1, those are all of the different variations of the rotations and reflections that I made in the last video. And it was quite complicated. I think it is possible to do the, it this way, but I actually realized a much simpler approach is to think of it not in terms of triangles, but as uh, hexagons that are repeating across the page. Because if you look at it, um, we actually have a repeated block of, uh, to uh, of those triangles that's repeating as a hexagon element across the page. So I think a much simpler approach is rather than trying to um, deal with triangles, is make those into this hexagon element and then tile that. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. First, I'm going to create a P5 graphics object and draw a hexagon into it from the tile elements. And then I'm going to take that P5 graphics object and create a for loop that goes across the canvas uh, and down the canvas and tile the hexagon each time. You can see here, you just need to be a little bit careful when we do the tiling that we're not sort of putting them right next to each other like we would with uh, squares or circles. There's a sort of a, an offset that we'll have to think about. But it'll be a lot um, simpler than dealing with the triangles. So let's get started with the code. Now I've done a little bit of work already to figure out which images uh, I would use to create that a hexagon cell. So um, I've just copied and pasted that in there. It was just a little bit of tedious work, so it's probably not worth showing here. But these are the variations of rotation and reflection that we're going to need to use. So first task is to take this, and rather than doing uh, drawing this in the draw loop, I'm going to actually get rid of uh, these parts. I'm going to move this part and these other parts here to the setup part of the function. And if I run that again, we should see just the, the hexagons drawn to the screen. Um, ah, problem is I'm clearing the background, so let me get rid of that. There we go. So we've just got that one hexagon cell. Now at the moment I'm drawing them in as images. What I want to do is create a kind of a, a P5 object as an intermediary, like a container or a layer for those uh, triangles. So I'm going to say let, um, and I'm just going to call that object a hex, like for hexagon. And in setup I'm going to say hex equals create graphics. And I need to know the width and the height. So the width is going to be two triangles wide, which is 200 wide. And the height is going to be two triangles high, so that's 87 times 2. Um, <laughs> it's like 174, I think. But uh, it, it's actually easier if I just say uh, image mask dot height uh, times 2. And in fact, Rather than putting in 200 for the width, it's probably better to say image mask dot width times 2. Because if I ever change the size of that image mask, I won't have to recalculate the, the width of this part. Get rid of that closing bracket. And now, rather than drawing the images straight onto the canvas, I'm going to draw them into this hex graphics object. So I'm going to say uh, hex dot image. So just put hex in front of all of those calls to image so that we could draw the images into it. Like that. And I'm going to have to change the position a little bit. So rather than them being drawn 10 from the left, I want them all, the first one to be uh, 0 from the left and 0 from the top. I want the second one to be um, 
image mask dot width over two from the left. So it's half a triangle over and at zero height. And the third one is going to be one full uh, triangles width over and at zero height. And then the next row is going to be one triangle's height down. So image mask.height for the X on all three of these. I'm just going to line these up. Oops. And the, the Y position of them is going to be one triangle's height. So, um, oh, I've actually got that around the wrong way. So the X position needs to be uh, zero and then one, one triangle's height. It needs to be at width over two. So let me just copy that and image mask dot height. Let's move this over so we can see the code and then image mask dot width. Image mask dot height and get rid of these last numbers here that are left over. And I'm going to line this up so we can just more easily see if there are mistakes like extra commas like that comma there. Okay, zero image mask width over two image mask width. So that's the three going across. And then the first row is at, at zero Y position. And the second row is at one triangles height Y position. So we've drawn them into the hex. Now we need to draw the hex to the canvas. So we can treat a hex, this uh, graphics object just like any other image. So I'm going to say image hex and I'm just going to draw it at zero, zero. So let's see how that works. Okay, it looks like our hex is a little bit cut off. So I might not have got the width quite right. Let's just go and check where I created that. And you can see there on line 25, I've actually put in image mask dot height for the width of the um, hexagon. So I actually need to just change this to width. That looks better. Okay, we've got our hexagon element. Let's now um, create a for loop, a nested for loop, to um, tile this across the screen. So I'm just going to move my, remove some of these spare lines and just put in a comment. So create a object, a graphics object that holds the hex cell. And rather than drawing the image in the setup function, I'm going to have a for loop in my draw function. And I'm going to say um, for let x equals, we'll start off just with x equals zero. x is less than width, x plus equals. So each time, let's just think about how the X is going to change each time. If I'm sort of thinking about drawing these across the page, each time I'm going to increase the X by one full width of the hexagon plus one full width of a triangle. So that's how much X is going to increase each time. And that's not going to matter whether I'm on one of these even rows or, or an odd row. So also on an odd row, I will increase by one full width of the hexagon plus one width of the triangle. That total amount. So I can just say um, x plus equals hex dot width, that's the width of the hexagon, uh, plus image mask dot width. And then um, for let y equals zero, y is less than height, y plus equals 
So how's y going to change each time? Well, it's going to change by half the height of the uh, hexagon each time. If I'm going to draw odd and even rows like this, it's going to change by half that amount each time. So y plus equals uh, hex dot height over 2. Now the last little trick is I need to um, offset every odd row, like every second row needs to get pushed in a little bit. Um, there's a few different ways to do this. I'm just going to do a simple one to get it um, started really. So I'm going to just going to say um, let is odd row equals false and I'm just going to switch this from false to true every time we finish a row and then I'm going to use that to uh, just calculate an offset. It's a, it's a little bit of a an ugly way of doing it but it will work and that's the main thing. So um, I can check that when I set my um, let's see so the the, the row is going to change every time I finish this inner loop. Actually, so I want it the other way around. I want it so that I go um, on the inner loop, I'm going across the page, I think will make more sense. So I'm going to, whoops, move it around. So we've got, on this inside loop, we're going across uh, the canvas. So I'm going to say so I'll make a variable called x offset and set that at 0 and then here I can say if is odd row x offset equals and what's it going to equal? So every um, every second row is sort of pushed over by, uh, what's that, one and a half triangles width, one and a half triangles width. Otherwise it's, it's not pushed over. Again, this is not the most um, elegant way to, <laughs> to do this, but I mean, I always think it's just important to get something working first and, and then figure out, um, you know, if it's worth doing something more, more, more elegant in terms of the code. All right, so we have the X and the Y, and then we can say uh, image hex at X and Y. That's all we need to do. And then finally, I'm going to say, um, is odd row equals the opposite of what it was before. Is odd row equals not is odd row. So we're just going to flip it at the end of the row. Let's see if that works. All right, so it's not, <laughs> it's not working exactly, um, but that's all right. Let's figure out how to debug this now. One thing that I think would be useful is to say uh, tint the odd rows uh, red and the even rows green. So I'm going to say tint 25500 and I'll give it some alpha for the odd row and then I'll make the even rows uh, green. So here I'm going to say 0, 255. So we should be able to just sort of see the different rows. So it looks like the um, we've got those even and odd rows, um, but they're just not being pushed over. The red rows, the odd rows are not being pushed over. And actually, if you look at it right here, when I draw the image, I'm just drawing it with that X value. I'm not using the x offset. So that's the problem. We just need to add in that x off offset to the x. Simply just here, just go x plus x offset. So that's an example of sort of giving yourself some visual feedback through the canvas can let you see where the, uh, the code is going wrong. I think this will fix it. 
<laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> um, X plus X offset. Ah, <laughs> the problem here is I've said X offset equals image mask times 1.5. I need to say image mask dot width times 1.5. So I would have been getting not a number as the value. A and then we have it. Now, the last thing is <coughs> um, the I want to sort of push the whole thing up by half a hex and over by half a triangle. So I can start my Y at negative uh, hex over height over two. And I can start my X at negative image mask dot width over two. Okay, so that looks like it's lining up. One last thing, let's make the canvas the whole window width and window height. We've done that. And I'm going to take away the uh, tint. Run it again. Looking good. And now let's just finally look at this in a uh, full screen so we can glory in the wonder that is the um, kaleidoscope effect. Okay, so there you have it, uh, a kaleidoscope effect. Um, we could go further with this and animate what's happening in the kaleidoscope. I think that would be uh, very nice to do. I, I probably won't do that with this example. Maybe sometime in the future I'll come back and finish that. I'm going to leave that here now. What you could try um, doing is try different images, um, try drawing procedurally, like with code, create the pattern that goes into the triangle elements. Uh, try skewing the whole thing, um, animating it, lots of different stuff. Experiment with text as the thing that's repeated in, in each cell of the uh, kaleidoscope. Like, what would a kaleidoscope of your name look like if it was um, animating around? That could be really fun to play with. Happy creative coding and I look forward to seeing what you do based on these examples.